All right, and we are live for Recap Roundtable 20.3, brought to you by the Institute of Clinical Excellence. I'll be your host and facilitator today. My name is Alan, serving as the CEO of ICE, faculty member for our fitness athlete division. Today we have Dustin Jones from the older adult division, up-and-coming CrossFit athlete. We have Christina Previtt, also from the older adult division with her daughter, Maya. And then we have Jeff Moore, CEO of ICE. And then we have Zach Morgan, faculty member for our cervical and lumbar spine courses. So 20.3 was a repeat workout of 18.4, 21.15.9 deadlifts at 225 for the guys, 155 for the ladies into handstand push-ups. And then immediately into another 21.15.9, this time of a heavier deadlift, 315 for the guys, 205 for the ladies, and then a 50-foot handstand walk after each round of deadlifts. And again, as we did in 18.4, we had the return of the controversial handstand push-up standard uh, where you have to take your height, you have to take the length of your forearm, half the length of your forearm, the square root of the hypotenuse of the distance between Mars and Venus, add that together, and that is the line that your heels have to cross at the top of the handstand push-up. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of gripes and trouble with this standard 18.4. Um, I don't think they brought it back for any other reason this year than just to make sure that we can retest against the exact same standards that we had in 18.4. I don't think they brought it back for any other reason. Uh, this year, a lot of folks trying different stuff, some folks doing handstands on their fists to try and clear their heels, some folks doing, uh, I saw some folks doing the workout in their Olympic lifting shoes to give their heel a bit of a bump to get above the line, all sorts of crazy stuff going on for this standard, but that was the workout. Um, let's throw it to Christina, who I think just did it today, correct? Is that correct? Yeah. So we'll have Christina talk about her experience with, with 20.3. Yeah, this is probably a workout that I got through a decent amount on pure like skill acquisition. So I got 12 reps into the 205 bar. So for reference, like I didn't really mark the lines. I just kind of did the workout. Um, I took this in like pretty much I felt like this workout, just like any of the girls, you can hit a red line real quick. And once your handstand pushups die, goodbye score. So for me, I just tried to take them into like bigger chunks at the beginning. So I would do like, I did like nine or 10 came off and then put it into smaller sets and just really felt out the overhead component. I called this workout. I said we were going inverted. Um, and then, so my love hate, so I'll, everyone knows that's probably listening to this that I don't do CrossFit anymore, but going to a heavier bar under higher fatigue always, especially a heavy deadlift, it's like one of those things that I'm like, ah, man. So um, I started taking the 205 in singles and then I got to like 12 reps and I was like, my form's going to poop. So I'm just, I'm just going to call it. So I had like 10 or 15 seconds left and I just said, you know what? It's not worth it for my postpartum body with my midlife stability. I was like, I've challenged it enough today. So, um, but it was a good workout. Like I liked it, like shorter time domain, you know, you put some skill in there. Handstand push-ups were always good for me. Like I used to be able to crank them out, no problem. So even still having not done it, the 45 handstand push-ups didn't really feel like a lot. Um, the standard for sure, I have a very narrow, uh, my hands are very narrow on the handstand push-up and I just dorsiflex my, dorsiflexed my feet. And as long as you don't go into this huge exaggerated like lumbar extension and just showed control at the top and not try to like, so some people can just really rush it and then when they're really trying to rush it, that's when you don't show that little bit of control at the top. That can be the difference between having your feet go over that line or having your heels go over that line and not having your heels go over that line. So taking it for a second at the top from a postpartum perspective, that's where you breathe, right? To make sure you're keeping control of your breath. So same thing, point of performance. Like I think that that could be really helpful. So overall, I liked it. It's a pretty fun workout. What uh, what do you think we're going to see on 20.4? Do you think this is the heavy barbell that we normally see? Do you think this, we saw it in this workout, or do you think we'll see another one? No, I think I'm going to be sending another message to my coach saying, I'm sorry for wrecking myself on this workout. 
please put that into consideration for my training next day. Um, I have a feeling we we're going to see a heavy, hopefully a heavy snatch. If I can get away with going off program and doing a heavy snatch, that'd be fun. Um, <laughs> but, and, and I want it to be a full snatch. Like I want everybody like getting their butts down to their ankles and getting into that full. Yeah. Justin's like, no, um, cross I would love to see like no power snatch. Allowed. Yeah. Yeah. Crossfitters notice squat snatch, weightlifters knowing it, it as the snatch. And um, so, yeah, I would like to see full, full depth getting under it. Cool. Jeff, um, how did this workout treat you with uh, an update as to on your, uh, your calf? Yeah, so the gait pattern is normalized. Um, I, I'm walking without looking, you know, very, very unusual. Um, I couldn't do it. So I tried to do the handstand push-up. When I fall off the wall, which I do commonly, you land in a lot of plantar flexion. I didn't foresee this, but when you fall off the wall, you tend to land on your toes. And the first time I fell off, I was like, whoa, I'm not doing that. Um, so bailed out of that, put 95 on the bar for a strict press instead and did 21.15.5. Um, I did the 225 on the deadlift and then did a strict push overhead to try to get some stimulus there. Um, and I was struggling. I, I mean, the, that deadlift got heavy on me fast. Um, but if I would have gotten to 315, that would have been singles for me. Um, so it, it, I was I was really worn out, um, but I enjoyed it. I was glad I got some overhead and some heavy deadlifting in, heavy for me. Um, so I thought it was a great workout. And I think next week I'm going to be good to go as long as we're not jumping. Cool. Zach, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I didn't mind this one. It was, uh, I didn't do it in 2018. Uh, we were like moving from Austin back home during that open. So we missed it. And I remember hearing about like the standard being chaos, but I had always kind of liked handstand pushups. And uh, then we went into the gym, you know, like Christine said, I kind of press more narrow than a lot of folks anyway. So it really wasn't a big deal. I had a few no reps, but nothing major. Um, and I thought that really wasn't nearly the big deal that everyone was making it out to be until I went in to judge one of my buddies that I always work out with at 4 p.m. And we put our arm, we're about the same height, and we put our forearms right up beside each other, and my wrist came, like, way shy of his. So his forearm was significantly longer. And in most workouts, we're neck and neck, and this one, it wasn't fair. Like, the the difference in our anatomy made a huge difference compared to what we would normally see in our 4 p.m. class. So I was like, man, that is kind of messed up in that sense that it was mostly just anatomy that I feel like limited him. But overall, I mean, I do think the workout's a great test. I've always kind of liked Diane, um, kind of intentionally broke up the deadlifts just to save myself for 315 a little bit and then did big sets on the handstand pushups. I, I think that's a workout I probably could go unbroken if I was all out sprinting, but I saved myself and then the, the deadlift bar was heavy. Um, I'm a little less confident than Jeff was that he would be able to lift that if he had gotten to it. Um, it, it those those 225 reps accumulate on you. So I think uh, it was pretty challenging. And there were some guys at our gym that usually can move that that had had a hard time. And unlike Christina, who was smart and stopped whenever her uh, form started breaking down, I just went ahead and sent it, got them all, and then got a little bit of uh, that handstand walked on. So, but you'll be glad to know that alexis who's been in the deadlift section of the the fitness athlete course was very much drawing my awareness to the fact that i was losing uh lumbar extension but i just kind of gave her that dead-eyed look of your advice is welcome here but it's not going into effect Go in. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna get moved <laughs> we're, we're in competition mode not training mode um, as Mitch said, hey, I can accept these deadlifts because we're competing, but do not deadlift like this during normal training. I will scream at you. It's only allowed this one yep. day of the year. Yeah. But you I will say, like, everyone's advice was wear a belt. And I uh, have historically not liked wearing a belt. And uh, the last year's open with the one with the ASIN and cleans, someone talked me into wearing a belt, and I actually injured my back in that workout. So this time I was like, I'm not wearing a belt. I don't care. And I'm fine. So I feel much better off for not wearing a belt than I did for it. So I think that's kind of gotten really popular. But I think, you know, it's just sort of and that's whatever perfect, you uh, normally do. What you should do. Perfect N equals one evidence against a belt right here, folks. You've heard it. Publish right. it. They don't work. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I, do you I belt. The belt for sure. 
I think it really depends on what's your limiter. Like for me, like I was wearing a belt very loosely just for proprio from a midline perspective, but it was also making it really hard to breathe. Yeah. So if you're tr like really taking those belly breaths, that belt is going to impede your ability to do that. So it it's actually probably going to jack your heart rate up faster because you're going to be in a more apical breathing pattern than maybe you normally would. So I think it really does depend on the belt just in terms from a mechanistic perspective, you know, People tend to rely a little bit on it, but um, yeah. The other crazy thing, so it's funny that you say, uh, Mitch, about the form. When you're competing in weightlifting, like there is no benefit to your form going, like just starting to break down. So it's always funny because it's like not, it's not a training thing. It's like you will drop the barbell in front of you if your technique starts to wash out. But yeah. Right. Zach, what are you, what are you thinking for 20.4 on Thursday? Let's go with Christina's pick. I would love to see some snatches, something like Amanda, where it's 975 squat snatch and muscle ups. I would love that. I would not love that. That would limit a lot of people. <laughs> I guess you're the fittest you're or you're not. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Get the work done. Get the work done. Jeff, we didn't ask you, given, given your uh, condition, that's a that's in, in, inappropriate. Given your current state of function, that's better. That's more appropriate. Given your current state of function with your with your calf, um, what are you hoping to see? I know probably not box jumps, but what movements what movements would make you happy in general, but also given the given the state of your calf? So I mean, I'd love to row. Okay. Yeah, I've been working on rowing quite a bit lately. I, I would love to yank on the rower, um, in particular something maybe shorter duration and try to pull as hard as I could. I've been spending probably more time on that than anything. And then, you know, believe it or not, as much as I'm poor at them, I love snatching. So as long as we don't combine full and squat, those two words together are problematic. But if we can do a little bit of a lighter full snatch or do a little bit of a heavier power snatch, um, I, I like that because I'm it's such a challenge. It's kind of like throwing a, a, a folding chair down a flight of steps to watch me do it. It's a, it's a really bizarre scene, but <laughs> I, I, I love the psychomotor challenge. So I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. <laughs> awesome reference. Um, okay, so rowing and snatching then, which I don't think we'll see, unfortunately. I don't think we'll see a light power snatch given that that's pretty, <laughs> much, pretty much what we had in 20.1. So maybe the rower, but I think you're... Uh, your your bets for a light power snatcher out. S sorry. Appreciate that. I'm sorry. Maybe Thanks for right. having me. <laughs> um, Dustin, we'll throw it to you. How did your 20.3 go? Um, and what are you hoping for in 20.4? Uh, it was a great handstand push up practice session. I'll tell you that. Very optimistic. I like. It was that. awesome. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I, it, it was, this is a great experience. I learned a lot. Um, so I've, I've never done a hand, a full handstand push up before Friday. So I had always done, you know, I started off, I think three ab mats and down to two and then down to one. And, uh, it, there's been a lot of fear associated with getting upside down. Um, so anytime that there would be any, any work on the hands where I'm inverted, my heart rate immediately goes up. So when I heard the announcement, I heard deadlifts. It's like, hell yeah, I can do two things. I can deadlift and I can I can run 50 miles. If you give me either of those things, I'll, I'll do okay. But in terms of handstand push-ups, terrible. So did not have a good feeling going to this. Um, got some work from, from my coach uh, that morning and got a good placement in terms of, you know, marks where my hands need to go. Um, and luckily my forearms uh, were conducive to not getting a, a bunch of no reps, but I knocked out one full handstand push. So my first full handstand push up was right before the workout. And I was just jacked up. I thought, oh my gosh, I can do this. Maybe I can get 10. And I was really excited. I was in a good spot. And to give people a reference of why I hate this so much, I, I'm weak, first of all, but then I'm, I'm six foot two and I, I screen positive for Marfans when you look at my wingspan compared to my heights. I don't have Marfans though, Marfan syndrome. But th this is just a really tough one for me. So the workout starts and well, the time cap, I don't know if we mentioned this, but the time cap for the score, the, the tiebreaker, uh, was the time that you finished your last round of deadlifts. So in my mind, this workout for someone like me is 21 deadlifts and then 
five handstand push-ups or whatever. I was not even thinking about the 15. And so I just ripped 21 deadlifts in 39 seconds. I was like, okay, eight minute and 21 seconds of handstand push-ups. And so just started getting after it. And I was doing sets of two and the timing felt good. And I was going up and I was, uh, you know, meeting that, that line and it just felt awesome. And so I uh, did twos up until 16 and then did singles. And I had, I think three no reps. And then I had, I think it was like a minute left. Um, and I got done with the 21. It was like, okay, what, what's next? I forget. I wasn't really thinking this far ahead. And then did uh, 15 deadlifts and then got one more handstand pushup. Wow. And at that point I was gassed and fried. Um, but it, I was super pumped and it just really showed me that my limiting factor with this movement, I mean, it is capacity, but for me, the big thing was my perception. It was fear. It was my just fear associated with getting upside down and, and doing this movement. It made me think a lot of what Christine and I will talk about in our course with modern management of the older adult about how fear can impact performance and floor transfers and how people feel a lot of fear, even just standing up on their own two feet. And there's not too many instances where we uh, feel that in our day-to-day -day life. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty rare. <clears throat> and that was one for me to where I really felt like I could empathize with, with a lot of my patients. Um, another thing to note, this is pretty cool too. I don't want to take too long, but Friday Night Lights was, was that night. I, I took my daughter Lucy. She, She's 14 months old and we're just standing there. I'm drinking a beer. I'm holding her and I'm kind of uh, the, the runway for the handstand or the handstand walk. I was standing right in front of it. And then we had a, we had a couple people get into the handstand walks and it was amazing to see my daughter's reaction. Cause for me, you know, I, I'm kind of used to it now just being like in the gym and being around crazy fit people that that's, it's normalized, you know, that people are literally walking on their hands and we watch videos of it all the time but she's never seen that before. And she absolutely lost it. Just started pointing and wow, wow, what, you know, just this look of absolute astonishment and amazement. And it forced me to take a step back and realize these people are freaks of nature. Even the fact that someone can do a handstand push up and even walk on their hands is just a skill that is not normal whatsoever. But I feel, especially like for you all that have been around this longer than I have for sure, it, it's like a prerequisite, prerequisite skill. It's like a normal skill, but to really realize that it's not, like this is something special that people are able to do and really appreciate that. So so Lucy Lucy taught me a lesson. That was, that was really cool to see her reaction to, to people going upside down. What are you hoping to see? 20 In terms of predictions, I don't care, whatever. Okay. I don't care, man. I really let's just, let's get over that. with. Let's have some fun every week. <laughs> I, yeah, don't don't ask me anymore. I don't care. I, I don't like to mentally masturbate about this stuff. Just show me the workout and let's do it. Fair enough. Um, I think uh, I think what you just said was really cool. I think it's something we take for granted at my gym. I know Christina made a comment on it earlier, just how cool it is to see regular people, quote unquote, kick up and just do handstand push ups. Um, and just shows that, you know, if you train functional movement, then even tasks like that, which seem out of reach for, for most people, are, are common skills that we see in the CrossFit gym. Not uncommon to see 40 and 50-year-olds kicked up and doing handstands next to people in their teens and young 20s. And it's just something that we do take for granted. Just It's just one of those things that you develop over time as, as you train this, this style of fitness. Cool. Well, um... I, uh, I went and did 20.3 Friday morning. I had to jump on a flight and go down to Florida, so I banged it out Friday morning. I uh, underestimated the, uh, the line crossing fiasco. Um, so the, I didn't have any hesitations about the 225 deadlift or getting some reps. And I told myself I would get to the 315 bar, but got hamstrung by the handstand push-ups. My handstand uh, position is normally wider and it's also further away from the wall. And I had to be very, very narrow and right up against the wall to even get my left foot over the line. And if you know me at all, you know that I have very tight ankles. And so I have zero degrees of active dorsiflexion on my right ankle. So what I was doing was crossing the line easily with my left foot and not coming close on my right foot. And so I spent, uh, I got off the barbell in about 50 seconds and spent like Dustin, eight minutes of handstand practice with my judge just screaming, your right foot, dude, your right foot, <laughs> over and over again as I struggled to, uh, to clear my right foot. Uh, I only got through 18, 18 handstands in the first round, which um, for me, a low score, 
but I think given the standard um, and given my progress with handstands, even over the past couple months, I was very happy with. Um, it's only been about a month since I've been able to do a full range of motion handstand head to the floor without without pain. So that was a big accomplishment for me to be able to even go through the full range of motion uh, pain free. Although being that close to the wall and being that narrow, I paid for it over the weekend. I had, I had terrible radiculopathy all, all weekend down both arms, just peri periodically throughout this weekend, one or both arms would just go numb unless I moved it. So um, I thought about redoing it yesterday um, on my way home from the airport, just, just jumping in and trying to get more handstands, but decided against it because I enjoy the fact that my arms have not gone numb for 24 hours. I like the way that feels. Um, so decided to, uh, to play it safe, play it smart and, and not try and, uh, and bang through that, that narrow grip handstand, uh, range of motion any further. Uh, but again, sat satisfied with my score, uh, overall 20.4. I would not like to see anything high skill or heavy. I would like to take it easy. Dave Castro, please. Uh, let's see like burpees, box jumps and calories on the rower. Just, uh, something real easy. I know that's not probably going to happen. Um, I know there's probably going to be a muscle up and a heavy barbell, something like that. But I'm kind of embracing uh, the Dustin Jones mentality of just bring on whatever it is and just uh, do your do your best. Do your best. Um, any other? It's just an excuse for being terrible. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> um, any other thoughts here before we uh, wrap up, gang? Thoughts, comments? None. None. Work those retractions. Work those retractions. Trust me, brother. I've been doing that all weekend long. Mm -hmm. It's been working <laughs> wonders. Pressure on. Pressure. What on. did they? Um, what did they decide about the fist handstand push-ups? Were so, they okay with it? They have not ruled on that yet. Oh. There's, there's two different things in the rule book. The first says. Um, unusual ways to achieve the movement standard won't be tolerated but then there's also something in the rule book that um, they will not rule against folks who have physical limitations that prevent them from fully meeting the movement standard so that was the that was the part of the rule book that those going on their fists um, decided would would let them try it on their fists one of them is a, a games athlete Jacob Hepner who has freakishly long forearms he uh, couldn't do this workout at all back in 2018 and, and couldn't do the open, couldn't go to the games because of it. So he was the one that put himself uh, doing the workout on his fists on Instagram over the weekend. So we'll see what they say, if that's if that's a go or a no-go. Yeah. Yet to be determined. I'm all for it. Sweet. I think that's pretty brutal to do it on your fists. Huh. That's a, a next-level hardcore, so I support that. <laughs> If you can do it on your fist, then go for it. You're going to make it worse for yourself. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely worse. Um, all right, so that's a wrap. Uh, that's a wrap for 20.3. We'll be back next Tuesday to talk about 20.4. Uh, keep your eyes peeled to ice, uh, social media for Gut Check Thursday for 20.4 tips and recovery from Onward and Health HQ and all of our different organizations uh, that help get you ready for 20.4. Other than that, we'll see you all next week. Thanks, Christina, Zach, Jeff, and Dustin for being here. Have a good week, everybody. See ya. See ya. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.